In part A, we are going to prove that the equation x cubed equals cosine of x has at least one real root. In part B, we use your, the calculator to find an interval of length 0 0.01 that contains a root. So we are going to define for that the function f equal x cubed minus cosine of x. And we are going to consider that function. So first of all, uh, before saying that, consider the function, let's say the following. We know from this we want to find a, a root of this equation, that is, a value x for which f equals 0. So, say that if the function is equal to 0, we can say that x cubed is equal to cosine of x, that is, a root of this function is a solution to the, equa the given equation. But in fact, what is important here is to notice that this implies that the absolute value of x, x cubed is equal to the absolute value of cosine of x, and then the absolute value cube of x is equal to the absolute value of cosine of x, and we know that the absolute value of cosine is less than or equal to 1. This will implies that the absolute value of x cubed is less than or equal to 1, and from this, taking square root both sides, we know that this implies that the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1. That is, x belongs to the interval negative 1, 1, close both endpoints. And that means that uh, the solutions of, to this equation here can only be in this interval. So we get we restrict our attention on this interval. So that's why we say that uh, that the function f is defined in that interval. because there, only there, we can find a solution of the equation. That's one thing. The other thing we can say before giving a solution to the problem is that uh, if we sketch the graphs of these functions, that is the function x cubed and cosine of x, we know x cubed is something like this, And cosine is something like this. And here we can have some kind of doubt about the behavior, but there is no doubt really because we can say something here. As you can see, the function cosine is positive between 0 and the value pi half here. And is decreasing between 0 and pi half. The function x cubed is increasing, is positive and increasing between 0 and plus infinity. It means they cut in one point, they intersect in one point, at one point here, let's say, this point here, and it seems to be this, the only positive solution to that equation, that point here. But from the left side, we can say something here is that the function x cubed is negative, while the cosine is positive up to negative pi half. 
So, if we look at the value of the function x cubed pi half, then we can say that the graph will be way below the cosine of, of x. And that's the case because if we calculate uh, negative pi half cube, if I have cube, we put it in here, is about negative 3875. 3.875. And it means that at this point where cosine com uh, begins to be negative, the uh, function x cubed has a value of negative 3.8. And because cosine can be uh, up to the value negative one, that is, it cannot be lower than that, it's impossible for the two cur curves to intersect on the negative values of x. So there is no solution in the interval negative one, zero. So we know, moreover, that the solution is on the interval zero, one. So we can say this here. Um, for x belonging to negative one, zero, which is negative part of the interval we know there lies the solution for x in that interval we know that cosine of x is positive because that's another way of saying be different from what I say here that is we know that negative one which is uh, the minimum value that can attain the solution of the equation, at that point, cosine is a positive value, has a positive value. That's because the cosine, I see it again here, if you want, here we have negative plus uh, pi half, and negative pi half is about 1.57. That is, negative one is like this, and there we have cosine with a positive value. So being cosine positive on the, this interval and x cubed negative in that interval, these two things together imply that x cubed equals cosine of x has no solution on zero, uh, negative one zero. And then knowing that the solution can only be on the interval negative one one and that there is no solution on the interval negative one zero, then the equation x cubed equals cosine of x can have solution only in zero one. The solution or solutions, if there is more than one, lies there. Okay, so all this we have said without calculating anything. That is, we are only analyzing the functions through the definitions of the function, in this case using the properties of cosine, the absolute value is less than or equal to one, and here using the signs of the functions on the intervals. With only that, we can we have uh, constrained our attention to uh, the interval zero one. 
And now, because f is continuous, so f from 0, 1 to the real numbers, define as x cubed minus cosine of x, is continuous. What we need to do is to find an interval where the function changes sign. But the interval will be the same interval here. We need a closed interval, of course, and this is closed interval. And let's see that the function changes sign there. f at 0 is equal to 0 cubed minus cosine of 0, that is 0 minus 1, that is negative 1, which is negative. And f at 1 is 1 cubed minus cosine of 1, that is 1 minus cosine of 1, and cosine of 1, we know is positive number but less than 1. If we see the graph here of cosine here, here is the, uh, the maximum value of cosine, which is 1, the interval negative by half by half. And uh, we can say that there, okay, value here is pi half. And we see clearly that at the value 1, which is this side here, which is less than pi half, we know that the cosine of that uh, of 1 is positive. That is, it's positive and it's less than 1 because the cosine is only 1 at 0. So this number here is a positive number being cosine of 1 less than 1. So the function changes sign at the endpoints of the of the closed interval and the function is continuous. We know from that that the function get to have a 0 on the interval 0, 1. And uh, uh, moreover, the, the root is inside the interval, it's not the endpoints because at the endpoints the function is not 0. So Let's write it here. So f is continuous on the closed interval and changes sign on the endpoints of this interval. More precisely, at 0 the function is negative and at 1 the function is positive. Then there, there exists at least a value x on the open interval such that f of x equals 0 that is x cubed minus cosine of x equals 0 that is x cubed equal cosine of x that is there is at least one solution of the equation which we wanted to prove so that's the main result So we have proved the first part, that is, there is at least one real root for the equation, the given equation. And uh, we know, moreover, that the solution is on the interval 0, 1. In fact, if we draw, uh, if we sketch the graphs of the two functions together, we can see that the solution is... Uh, closer to 1 than to 0. But now let's calculate that. And we got to find an interval of length um, an interval of length 0 0.01 that contains a root to the equation. So 
For that, we uh, do kind of a bisection method, which consists in the following. We can, as we start with the interval zero one, we cut in, a, in halves by the midpoint zero point one, and we know that we can apply the same theorem here for these two intervals, that is, we evaluate the function at the endpoints. In this case, we have evaluated already at zero, already at one. We know that at zero, remember, is negative. And at one is positive. And now we evaluate at 0. Uh, 0. 0.5. We do that, we get negative 0. 0.75, more or less. So at 0. 0.1, the function is negative. And so the change of sign now happened on the interval 0. 0.5, 1. So applying the same theorem, we know that there is a root now in, in the interval 0. 0.51. And we do the same again. We cut the interval 0. 0.51 in the half. And that's a midpoint that is 0. 0.75. And evaluate, look at the interval where the ch sign changes and go on this way. And this is called uh, bisection method. And with that, we do that until the interval which contains the solution is uh, of a size we want. That is, the precision is given by the length of the interval containing the root. In this case, if we do this procedure uh, sufficiently uh, large or um, for many iterations, we can find a very good estimation of the root, and in this case, we 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 can find the following value. So, a root for the equation equals zero is zero point. Eight six five four seven four zero three three one zero one six thirteen. Here we have used a very good precision. That is, we stopped the process when the interval was containing the root was about of a length of negative uh, ten to the negative fourteen. So it's a very good approximation. And knowing that the root is about that value, we can say that an interval containing the root and of length 0 0.01 is the following. So the interval 0 0.86, 0 0.87 contains the root because the this value is a little bit greater than this and less than this. And the length of this interval is 0 0.01. We always can do that. That is, we do bisection procedure or method up to a very good precision and then we find an interval with a given measure that contains a root. We can give it even an even smaller than this interval that contains a root because we have here in fact a precision of 10 to the negative 14 about that so we can do we can give intervals of, le of smaller size than this containing the root. And as a final remark, we can say that this is the only root of this equation on the interval 0, 1. We can verify that, for example, graphically, if we sketch the graph of x cubed and cosine of x over 0, 1, 
and we can verify that this is the only word. 